Welcome back to the show. If you're an avid viewer, you might recognize this screen. The end of my 100k special. If you haven't, go back and check out that 100k special to catch you up to speed and you can see exactly how we got to this point. Today, it is the much anticipated epilogue, the aftermath of BCHD Junior's career, as we'll be retiring myself in FIFA, aiming to sign my regen whenever he spawns in our save next season. Can my own regen carry on my prestigious legacy? Will the pressure get to him and he completely completely fails or will he go on to achieve even more and win things BCHD Junior could never. It's the 100k special continuation and as you can see there I'm retiring at the end of the season. I've become the sacrificial lamb for this video for the content. We're currently in 2031. I'll let myself captain the Red Devils for one last time as in my final game I'll be hanging up the boots and hopefully taking home an FA Cup trophy. Here we have it then we're going for one last game a final dance at Wembley as the famous arch gets to farewell legend of the beautiful game and I cap it off with a 3-1 win for United actually Pedri just stole the show a hat-trick for the Spaniard I came off a bit heartless from the manager but nonetheless we take home the title all right then looks like we have another priority some European duty up against Chelsea in a Champions League final forget it BCHD Junior is about to drop one more masterclass before he dips now I get why Sir BCHD was taking me off letting me rest for the Champions League final now we're not going to change the starting 11 we're going to hop straight into it and if you do go on to enjoy this video and the concept, make sure to drop a like down below if you're looking forward to what BCHD Junior's reincarnated regen is going to look like next year. As we simulate this one, it is another 2 1 win, and this time I stay on for the full 90. We've got Upa Makano and Pedri to thank. It's a fitting way to bow out in successful fashion, winning the Champions League, winning the FA Cup in my last two games. With a total of 65 appearances, 15 goals, and 15 assists, perfectly balanced like all things should be. I got myself 30 goal contributions and 28 clean sheets this year. My final professional playing career. A valuation of £124 million. Now at 31, I'm ready to pass on the baton. I've reached my pinnacle. I'm sad to see it happen, but my time has come. As soon as we click continue, BCHD Junior will be no more. We'll have an Italian stallion respawn into the game in season number 12. That's right, the 2031 slash 32 season is up next. We're going to see where in the Premier League my regen is drafted to. Here are the current search parameters we're using right now in order to attract down at BCHD Junior's regen. We've got it on camp position, 16 to 21 years of age, obviously Italian and retired in the Premier League. So that is where he's going to spawn in the game. Let's have a quick search and there is only one result coming up. That is the 16 year old Gianluca Romagnoli. He's currently situated at Everton. So he'll be trying to emulate his father's career at Merseyside. On the blue half, which I can approve, valued at 5.5 million pounds. He is at a 71 overall already. He nearly has some maxed out attributes in his locker. And something which is incredibly exciting to behold, he has potential to be special. That means the 90 plus regions can be achieved. Taking a closer look at him, and his profile picture does not do him justice. He's currently rocking a sideshow Bob Escafro, and his profile photo has him in a mohawk. We can't go past the spaghetti arms, man. My regen definitely needs to hit the gym. Nonetheless, I'm a fan of his drip. As weird and wacky as it is, unfortunately, he doesn't have any traits or specialities about him. You can tell he's clearly my regen because he can play a cam, center back, and goalkeeper what other player on earth is going to have that weird of a position combination if you need any other further proof he has my exact birthday and that's when you can tell his date of birth 3rd of april 2015 currently he isn't in everton's first team plans whatsoever but that's the fun of it we're going to simulate his career from afar and see if he gets loaned out or he's just thrown into the starting 11 straight away is he going to be loyal to the toffees or is he going to become a journeyman for the time being let's see how my regen's debut campaign goes down now romagnoli hasn't really been gifted with the best of Everton's sides. In fact, they nearly got relegated, collecting 38 points this season, still 10 points ahead of the drop zone. However, you'd expect the Toffees to be pushing further up the table than that, at least in the top half, but they have just finished way off the mark. We've just jumped in to check in on their results, so we had no bearing on this as they got knocked out in the round at 6. So Leeds United 2-1 in the FA Cup. Over in the Carabao, I don't think any magical Miracle Cup runs happened here. Yet another early elimination, this time in round 2 to Watford. 3-0. Who knows, maybe this is a blessing in disguise that this team, this Everton squad is so bad that Romagnoli can actually get some decent game time and be slowly phased into the starting 11. But being so far off the pace and in terms of his squad ranking, he only has a sporadic squad role. Still has that potential to be special as he grew a plus two this season, turning 17 and his stats read a little bit like this. Okay, he did manage to get some appearances under his belt, scoring himself a first Premier League goal, also getting a goal in the FA Cup and one assist. Dropping an average 
average 6.2 match rating. I thought it was just going to get zero game time, but I've been proven wrong. As a teenager, is now valued at 8.5 million pounds. Let's see how they get on in the Romagnoli's second campaign. I've decided for season two, why not? Why don't we just take a little bit of initiative here? We've got to sort out the situation with our Afro-haired Italian, so we've applied him or put him onto the transfer list just to see what kind of offers come in. The very first offer we have received for our boy Gianluca has come over from Bristol City. They're trying to snag him for 8.6 million pounds. For a team in the championship, that could be the perfect level for him to drop down to. They do play in a camp formation and have all the potential to be promoted. Unless another offer comes through, I'm accepting that. BCHD Juniors region potentially on the move already. There's your confirmation. It is written on the wall as Bristol City complete the purchase. The fee is agreed, however, based on his first season numbers at Everton, our boy is gone from has potential to be special to an exciting prospect. I'm not quite sure how that's going to impact the rest of his career or if he can bring it back to has potential to be special. Keep in mind, it's a marathon, not a sprint. The teenager has got so much more to go. Oh my days, that goalkeeper shirt is something else, bro. Look at that thing. We're going to dap him up with a development plan to improve that weak foot. For the time being, though, he's got to prove himself in the championship in this starting 11. Can he go ahead and show Everton what they're missing out on in season two? You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to let the table speak for it itself because the Romagnoli's Bristol City have secured promotion to the Premier League, clinching that second place promotion spot with 99 points. What a season it has been. How much did Romagnoli play a part? We're about to find out. They actually went pretty far in the FA Cup as well, had a decent chance of going through to the semis, losing out to Watford 2-1 in round 6. And the Carabao Cup again, losing out to promotion hopefuls and title winners Watford 3-2 in round 4. I guess the Italian doesn't have to worry about promotion playoffs this season. And he has now got himself up to a 78 overall. That is a plus five. His ratings jumped a decent amount. That's what you want to see. He's been sold a dream though. A rotation squad role only. And you can see right there, 42 appearances. So he definitely played more than a rotational player. Six goals and six assists. Whether that was off the bench or starting, I'm not quite sure. As he dropped an average 6.8 match rating. 12 goal contributions for the young Italian. As we move on over to his development. Now up to a five-star weak foot in good form. And his financial situation. He was sold to Bristol for 8.5 million pounds. Now his base market valuation is 26.5 million. I bet the board are licking their lips trying to see what profit they can make off him as his value has been boosted 278%. Don't count this man out yet. Still much more room to grow and improvement is there to be made. Now can he be one of their main protagonists in the top flight unlike he was at Everton? Now that they're up and about in the Prem, this has very serious and strong BCHD Junior vibes trying to keep Frosinone up in Serie A. Romagnoli's doing the exact same thing and carrying over that legacy here in England as he attempts to keep Bristol City afloat. This is their starting 11. We need this man to carry this team on his back alongside Efrain Alvarez and Han Noam Asengo. I would have loved to be getting that money every week as an 18 year old so this man better be putting in the performances of his life. There's no way you can write this kind of stuff. This season Bristol City have survived. Romagnoli has kept his side up. However his former team the Toffees ever Everton have reached the relegation zone with 30 points. They are going down to the championship. So I guess BCHD's regen got out of a sinking ship while he could. Bristol, they almost got relegated. I mean, they, it wasn't like they were safe until the last day. But Everton now for the first time down in the championship. The first time in their history. Romagnoli is yet to grab any pieces of silverware, unfortunately, as in the FA Cup, they were nowhere to be seen. And over in the Carabao, they were knocked out 2-1 to Leicester City in round three. Here we have him here. Now the second highest rated player at the club, only behind the captain, Han Noam Asengo. Now to 19 years of age, he's grown up a plus three. That is down two overall points. However, he has now entered the 80s at an 82 overall. He's still an exciting prospect, so yet to reach that has potential to be special. The crucial first team role definitely helped him out a lot as his appearances this season was 38. He played every, well, nearly every single Premier League game in multiple competitions, two goals and 10 assists. That's 12 goal contributions in 38 appearances with an average match rating of 6.1. He has outperformed these Everton days and those kind of performances have kept them above the Toffees this season. I actually forgot to change his development plan so maybe that's why he didn't grow as much. That's my bad. Just so that I don't forget we're going to change him over to a Dynamo. Let's go Dynamo. Financially the attacking midfielder is now valued at 53.5 million pounds seeing the Italian being boosted 59% this year. Who knows maybe Bristol is his rightful home. Will we see him thrive here for years to come or will a juicy offer come in for him that we just have to accept. As you can see, we're at the end of Karimo, June 
34. I'm going to use PC mods to our advantage so that we can simulate past this stage of career mode because normally this would be the end, but not for us PC users. We've got a couple of tricks up our sleeve. Just like that, head into season 16. Let's have it. We're about halfway into this summer transfer window and we've had some very interesting offers received for Romagnoli. Obviously, the Italians have come through here. Inter with a 63.3 million pound bid. Obviously, they know how much of a baller his father was, BCHD Jr. over in Serie A. Brighton also came through with a bit of an interesting swap deal, 21.7 million pounds plus Marco Luna. And then the biggest offer of the window, Atletico Madrid for 65.6. All countries and leagues where his predecessor played some of his best football. I don't know why, I'm just not getting good vibes off these moves. So we're going to wait for the right offer to come through and hopefully accept it before the window shuts. In the last couple of weeks, we've had the pick of the bunch to see where Romagnoli's next career move went. And we have found a brand new destination over at Barcelona. It's a league where his father played BCHD Jr. becoming a legend at Real Betis. Now he gets to return to La Liga just like the man who came before him, but this time play for the Blaugrana. The Catalan Giants have gotten a brand new Italian stallion in their ranks. It's a new league, a new country, and a top tier club he's joining at 19 years of age. You can see there, Man City were competing for his signature as well. There was no way we were given that move the green light considering PCHD Jr.'s Manchester United history. That would just go against all logic. However, we all know that the Spaniards love a little cheeky release clause and that's exactly what they've done. They haven't wasted any time implementing one into his contract. What a move that is for our favourite Afro-haired regen. From Bristol to Barca, this is a transfer move that has a price of £64.2 million. The Spanish outfit paying a hefty fee, showing their desire for the next big thing in world football. It's not the strongest Barcelona team I've seen as this back four and goalkeeper ask more questions than answers. With an abundance of attacking options and backup in off the bench, we might as well slot Romagnoli into that camp spot right there, replacing Kana. Let's see how easy it's going to be transitioning into this Barca system. I think it might work, you know. Unlike at Bristol, he has a long way to go until he reaches the top of the pack in terms of the roster. He's all the way down here. As always, 19 years of age, his development plan will just be a shadow striker. We need that attack and work rate to be high. Five star, five star already accomplished. I think we're in for a massive season. This could be his breakout campaign. No pressure kid. We've sorted him out with some brand new boots. Some new drip to boast about here in Spain. With BCHD Junior watching on, make us proud son. Here we go then. Even moving to one of the biggest teams in the world, Romagnoli cannot win any silverware whatsoever throughout his career as Real Madrid take home the league with 85 points. Seems like a Real Sociedad Sevilla and Atletico finish above Barca and they have been kicked out of Champions League qualification. It's Europa League or bust for next season as that has been an cr incredibly disappointing campaign. In terms of the Supercopa, they were nowhere to be seen actually. Losing out in the semi-finals to Real Sociedad 3-2 in a five-goal thriller. No UA for Super Cup. Was there any Champions League? All right, they did qualify last season. Second in the group right here. Alongside Roma, Dinamo Kiev and Olympic Lyon over in the round of 16, they actually just edged past Juventus 5-4 on aggregate. In a nine-goal thriller over in the quarterfinals, it was another close one a seven goal aggregate scoreline with a 4-3 win awarded to Bayern Munich as they went on to reach the final and lose to Manchester United 2-0. It's unfortunate Romagnoli didn't have the best of starts to his career in Spain. 13 appearances and two assists is definitely not enough game time whatsoever. He's in bad form too, not what you love to see, but he has improved a plus two to his overall this season. Now standing at an 85, he's gotten that high attack and work rate, which is what we set out for him. But unfortunately, I think there's too much competition. Danny Olmo is pr pretty much about to set to retire. Nonetheless, his market valuation right now has climbed up to 68.5 million pounds with a 38% boost. Yes, this transfer to Barca has boosted his career profile and I guess his discoverability, but it hasn't really done wonders for his output, nor is yet to make him a better player. A 37-year-old Danny Olmo is outperforming the lad with 24 goal contributions. No one can stop the Spaniard, who is also the captain of the club right now. It's a fascinating Barca squad filled with misfits, but yeah, they're all on the decline. It's an age team. But for now, they're trying to phase out some of the old dogs. Look at the average age of this team. There's about 20 players in their 30s. It's back to the drawing board for Romagnoli and the gang. We're going to pause, reflect on the season, see what we can do better and take on a season, what is it now? Six at Barcelona and really crack the code to try and get the best out of his game. We're trying to do the best we can in a not so favorable situation. We've changed up the formation just to imply that two cam. It's kind of a Christmas tree-like formation. Romagnoli and Olmo will be in those two cam slots with Henry, the main striker. Zamir gets pushed out to right mid, but this Barca side, they've been downgrading. They're old, they're ragged. We need some fresh blood along 
alongside Gianluca in order to keep this longevity going. They need to inject some young blood into this team alongside Gianluca in order to keep their longevity. We've just unloaded our transfer budget on a batch of brand new reinforcements just so that Romagnoli is playing around some of the best players in the world. We're going to accept the striker from Real Sociedad, Hobo Lang Fofana. What a name. Just get in my team straight away. 166.5 million pounds worth every single penny. The Englishman Josh Arnold from Leeds will join us as a brand new attacker. Can play on either side of the flanks and also a striker. I've got no idea, but some of these guys can be regens. Like this guy is definitely Jano Black's regen. Andras Kakoulis, welcome to the squad. Could be a potential first team goalkeeper. This roster is in desperate need of brand new centre backs and left backs. So Mori Uled Khaled will be the Frenchman joining us from Raul Valladolid for just under 84 million pounds as we transition on over again to another defender. It is Rodrigo Payero. The Sheffield United defender will join us instead of Parma for 40 million pounds. And last but not least, it is Maxim Dierex as those are some brand new inductees to this Barcelona squad. And now we're looking much more promising. It is vital that not only Romagnoli is growing, but his compatriots around him because the better players he's got around him, the better performances and output we're going to get out of Romagnoli. Let's go ahead and see if season six brings him any better fortunes. It's been a six season drought and a wave for silverware. And as you can see, to decide it for the La Liga title, we've got Real Madrid on top by goal difference, by head to head. Who knows what it's down to? But Romagnoli has been denied his first trophy of his career. Six seasons in, cuts to margins that close. Unfortunate stuff for the Blaugrana as they can't claim the title. And even in the Supercopa de España, can this guy catch a break? Honestly, Real Madrid went on penalties 4 3. It came down to the wire and Copa de España had better come through. And no, they can't even make it through to the final there. As Romagnoli still waiting for his first title, as in the round of 16, they got knocked out. The eventual champion, Sevilla 5 4 on penalties. Now, this, okay, this could be interesting. His first shot of a major title, and it's come in the form of the Europa League. Some continental silverware is up for the taking, and Wolves have met them in the final over in Group J. They completely topped it, undefeated, took down Fiorentina 3 2 on aggregate, moved past Chelsea, defeating them 3 1, and over in the quarterfinals, they took down fellow Spanish opposition Valencia 3 1, and in the semis, they took care of Europa League specialist Sevilla 4 3 to set up an epic clash. Here is what the squad is is looking like that is the starting level to headed out tonight. I want to watch this one play out. It's going to be a massive moment and a landmark occasion for his career. Can the Italian prove himself on the international stage? And he does. He even scores the first goal as well, showcasing some true character being knocked back in two competitions. He gets the 27th minute opener and his camp partner in crime, Yusuf Demir, with a 57th minute winner. 2-0 to the good. I feel like I've 100% come across this glitch before where the media or whatever's running this news source thinks that we've won both the La Liga and Europa League. In any case, how was his performances this season coming oh so close to getting two trophies in his locker? Unfortunately, that wasn't the case and he was the third best player or in terms of performances here at the club, increasing a plus two, the camp center back goalkeeper. The Afro stayed as poofy as ever as he's increased a plus two. His performances speak for themselves. 49 appearances, 15 goals and eight assists, 23 goal contributions for him in multiple competitions, dropping an average match rating of 6.9. We actually also did sort him out with a brand new contract, making him a crucial first team member and carrying that squad role, which has sent his valuation skyrocketing to 104 million pounds. He has joined the nine figure club. And just take a look at that release clause, 268.8 million pounds, just exuberant amounts of cash. Plus the advanced playmaker trait definitely did serve him well in good form. And he's still in the infancy of his career. Those spaghetti arms though, they, they, you know, he needs to hit the gym. He needs to start growing those muscles. They are definitely not it. Everything right now still hangs in the balance as Serb ECHD's region is love and life. It's kind of sad to see, but Italy did not qualify for the 2036 Euros. Therefore, Romagnoli not called up to the national team setup and is just enjoying time off on his holidays. You know what? Let's follow in BCHD Jr.'s footsteps and go for the number 16, just like he finished off his career at Manchester United with its exact same number. Whilst I was busy changing the number, his status has now got potential to be special. So he started off as that, he dropped down to an exciting prospect, and now now he has bounced back. Let's go ahead and give Shadow Striker another go. Honestly, his output definitely improved. Much more goal contributions and just overall performances now. He's at an 88 overall. Could be intention for the Ballon d'Or maybe this year. Who knows? I don't really know how to feel about this one. We've been miles off the pace here. And in seconds, Romagnoli has failed to actually win the La Liga title. Unfortunately, Atletico Madrid have just been something else this season. The points gap between first and second is 18. They didn't stand a chance. Over here.
here in the Supercopa de España. Again, it is Sevilla knocking us out in the semis 3 2. The Copa de España, and no, there is no domestic silverware for BCHD Juniors Regen to get a hold of. They were knocked out of the round of 32 to second tier side CD Castellon. Absolutely abysmal stuff, and right here in the UEFA Super Cup, yet another preseason trophy up for grabs, and Manchester United pipped them out to it 1 0. Oh, well, 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 would you look at that 2037's Champions League final? Romagnoli's Barcelona facing BCHD Juniors, former employers Manchester United in a Champions League final, about for the Holy Grail, and what a storyline that is. And here was their race to the final as they beat out Manchester City 4 3 on aggregate the quarters, saw them win on penalties 4 3, and in the semi finals, they won 4 3 again. That's just the magic scoreline of this campaign against RB Leipzig. Despite not even touching any pieces of domestic silverware in his life. He's got the Europa League in the bag and now he has the chance to score the Champions League tonight. Let's take a look at how his season has panned out. What kind of campaign has he had? And again, it's a plus three to his overall, standing at a 91. Standing at 22 years of age, he had 56 appearances, was well and truly involved in the mix. And for the first time in his career, he's got himself double figures in both goals and assists, 20 goals and 17 assists, 37 goal contributions, an average match rating of 7.0. He's well and truly stepped up, and I think I can attribute that to the shadow striker. Technically, his finishing is at a higher level. However, he does have some maxed out stats to boast about. 99 agility, 99 stamina, which is so important in career mode, and stats like balance and sprint speed both being at a 98. It is absolutely mental stuff from the youngster with no traits whatsoever. His value has now climbed up to 139 million pounds with a 21% boost. Gianluca Romagnoli, remember the name. The Camp News new hero. Let's take a look and see if the Ballon d'Or voters are going to start swaying their votes towards his way. He goes out and does the unthinkable tonight. I'll watch this one out, play in the match simulator, and then if he's struggling, if he, if he needs a bit of our assistance, I will jump in. Let's catch a vibe on how the match plays out, and then we might go ahead and, oh, nearly a goal straight away. Oh, there you go, already a goal, and Mezugwe Cavas, the left attacker midfielder, number 18. I wasn't even looking. I was taking a sip of my drink, and all of a sudden, the Blaugrana have gone 1-0 up. I still don't know how this team got into a Champions League final with that poor league record and also an 81 rated keeper but he's going to be put to the test and what a save from the Slovenian. That is half time for you. 1-0. They took their chance and now in the second 45 but let's see what they've got. Romagnoli spreads the play across. Not too much has happened in this second half but they do get an attacking chance. Romagnoli involved again. Some touches in the box and he just goes wild with a shot. I think I might jump in here for the last 20 minutes and see what I can do. Had a Beck he'd be old by this stage of the game as the cross inside hits Peruzzi. And he's offside, thank God. Where's our boy Romagnoli looking as fly as ever with the gloves? Oh, he just glides past his opponents. The footwork, the skill. And can he do it again? The number 16 just gets caught out by Bizot. All over the top, United. Eight minutes left on the clock. And United still definitely look threatening as Kadebeck storms forward. We try and block all the passing lanes we can as Pedri ball inside and what a save from Kakulis. He's the All Black regen for a reason and our number one has kept Manchester United from a clear cut opener. Point blank range and the man's coming off. That's how angry the manager is right now. Hey, Romagnoli, where is he at? I've not seen him anywhere on the pitch so far. Peruzzi goes down and it will be a free kick in a dangerous area. Here we go. They do their little free kick routine. Pedri has a go. And how's that going in? Oh, and the free kick has absolutely been smashed into the top right-hand corner. And it looks like we're going to extra time. That is picture perfect. Even with a man on the line, we weren't saving that. Two keepers wouldn't have saved that. Oh, no, this isn't good. This isn't good. This is definitely not good. Keeper, come for it. Here we go. Oh, and it will be extra time. We're headed for an extra half an hour of football and possibly penalties. In our defense, Cavas spreads it forward. Mukoko sees the free run from Romagnoli. And the defender's got nowhere close to him. Those runners inside. A perfect little cross. And it's Arnold who misses the open net. Lovely little turn. Romagnoli spots the run. And it's a defense splitting pass into Arnold who'll drive it into the bottom left-hand corner. And with four minutes left on the clock, that one just might be the equalizer set up by Romagnoli himself. He gets an assist in the Champions League final. The gloves, he's looking cold. He's looking fresh. 
and the ball just absolutely divine into the path of Arnold. All he had to do was finish it past Donnarumma in nets. And the number 39, it gets Barca's second, which can possibly lead them to the ultimate glory. Karabek is just holding it in the middle, and the referee calls it there. They've done it. They look pretty in pink tonight, and Romagnoli gets the chance, just like his predecessor, and lives up to the billing with an 117th minute winner, assisted by the man himself. We're possibly witnessing a Ballon d'Or-worthy campaign, at least a nomination at minimum. There is no doubt he is in the conversation as they get the dark mode blacked out Champions League trophy to lift. The Italian Stallion will be beside himself. I think that's what, his second piece of silverware? He's got the Europa League and he's got the Champions League. No other domestic titles, nothing. Not even the UEFA Super Cup. I guess that is revenge for this season's UEFA Super Cup. Losing out 1-0 to United and they edge past them in 120 minutes. What a night. Now considered one of the world's best by many, the number 16 is certainly in with a shout. With a release clause like that, almost half a billion. I wanted to also point out that not only he got the winning assist, but he got the assist before, like to open the scoring. So 19 assists, 20 goals is what he ends off the season with. It's a big moment. Can he do what BCHD Jr. never could and win the golden ball, take the Ballon d'Or home? Let's find out as we enter season eight in 2037. And the main question on everyone's lips, has he sprung into Ballon d'Or contention? That territory, unfortunately, it wasn't the move. Well, it wasn't the season. He didn't play good enough to get involved in the top four Unfortunately, the likes of Peruzzi, Atletico Madrid player, and Lopez Ferreira are all up for the prize. Romagnoli has been completely disregarded. What a snub, man. Justice for Gianluca. This is a joke. Look, I'm going to stick this one out and be patient. We've given it another year, and the domestic cup curse has been broken. Finally, Romagnoli's Barcelona have taken home the La Liga title with 89 points, beating out the likes of Atletico. Could that be the case for the Italian to get even a nomination? I guess we'll find out. Their league winners and also Supercoppa winners taken an out against Atletico 2-1, so finally they're slowly starting to get their revenge and over in the Copa de España. That one's going to go to Atletico. This is something that this PC mods provide, the FIFA Club World Cup, and you just know our boy took it home. 2-1 against Boca Juniors in the final. They're champions of Europe, they're champions of the world, and now this season of course, champions of Spain. With a cheeky little treble under their belts, they have the opportunity for a quadruple. Not only that, just to back up their European campaign last time out, going back to back and defending the crown. This time, they're up against BVB, who haven't won this competition since the 90s, so they're going to be out in force. You could come and say the reason why he hasn't won the Ballon d'Or is because of his titles. He just haven't, hasn't won enough silverware yet. Well, I think this season is going to put that argument to bed, because he has not only won all those pieces of silverware, as a captain, he has gone out and not put up the best numbers. I mean, in comparison to last season, his output has dipped. Still rocking that consistent 7.0 match rating. Nonetheless, 13 goals and 15 assists, 28 goal contributions in 65 appearances. At a 92 overall, he's only grown a plus one at 23 years of age, the advanced playmaker development plan. I did decide to shake things up once he lost the Ballon d'Or. He's in good form and financially now valued at 153 million pounds. Even if it wasn't for tonight's final, he should definitely be involved in the top three to be 2038 player of the year. I just want to know, can he put up a finals masterclass? I'm not going to play this one out. I'll let the quick sim decide. And again, these close margins come out to us. It's a five goal thriller in the final. you got to think now, if he doesn't win it, it's just going to be a family curse. I don't know. If he's not even nominated this time, you definitely know UEFA and FIFA are just against this man for some reason. They've got something against us and the FIFA gods just don't get around Italian cams or something. I don't know. There's some sort of deeper conspiracy theory we've got to dig into. But in 2038, let's see who's nominated for the annual prize. I mean, not that he has to, but it would have been nice if Romagnoli took Italy to World Cup glory, but it wasn't to be. Over in Group D, the 2038 World Cup, they have finished rock bottom. No wonder why they didn't qualify for the Euros two years ago. A terrible display, not only for the nation, but our boy Gianluca, it's not a good look. It's 2038. We're almost 10 years into Romagnoli's career, and he's not nominated in the top four. It's heartbreaking stuff. You hate to see it, but look at these players that have come through the ranks. Dane Scarlett, Ansu Fati, Alonso Bello, and the Spaniard Pedri at Manchester United have all been nominated ahead of him, and in 2038, the Ballon d'Or still remains unattainable. They've won every single other competition, every piece of silverware they've come across, but the Ballon d'Or has just evaded them. It's kind of a bittersweet note to end on because, you know, they he deserved it, I feel like, especially after that season eight and season seven performances, winning four trophies in a calendar year. He should have been at least in the top four conversation, but, you know, EA don't want to give the man his credit and Gianluca goes without the golden ball. Nevertheless, that has been me retiring myself, citing my regen and trying to live out my dreams through FIFA. And in a virtual aspect, Gianluca and his spaghetti arms has been
in nothing but a G. It's been a pretty memorable one as the cam center back slash goalkeeper. He's going to go out as one of the world's best at only 23 years of age. If only Karimo had had unlimited seasons, we could go ahead and find out how good this man could truly be. You guys got to let me know down below who was better, BCSG Jr. or Romagnoli here. If you did go on to enjoy the video, make sure to drop it a like down below. All the socials are linked down in the description. If you're new around here, drop a sub as we've got content like this coming out on the regular. As always, I've been Sir BCHD. Have a great day and I'll catch you all in the very next video.